you are Locked On Giants Postcast, part of Locked On Sports Bay Area on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Locked On Giants postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Engel. You may know me as the former producer for the Murph and Mac Morning Show on KMBR, and tonight, a series sweep in Los Angeles with a Shohei Otani first home run as a Dodger, and it comes off of a Giant as the cherry on top. You absolutely hate, hate to see this if you're a Giants fan. The Dodgers take all three games over the San Francisco Giants as they close out the road trip on a four-game losing skid. Harrison wild on the mound tonight, but still showed that his stuff is big league level. Jorge Soler, solar power, showing up and showing off his power at the dish, and Michael Conforto stayed hot as well. But this Dodgers murderer's row of a lineup was just too much for the Giants to overcome. We'll break it We'll break it all down. But first, I want to thank all of you for watching us on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. Please, 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 if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you're getting us on the Locked On Giants podcast feed, thank you for listening there. However you're getting the show, we appreciate it. And make sure to check out the Locked On Giants daily show for more in-depth coverage. Ben Caswick does a really great job breaking down all the stats and info you need to know. And we're going to see if we can get Ben to hop on one of these postcasts and uh, do a little bit of a, of a crossover. You know what I mean? So we'll uh, we'll see how that uh, unfolds going forward in the future. But one one more note, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment matter more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Tyler Glass now is so impressive on the mound to me, man. I mean, he just ate up there as just 7Ks, uh, just that that curveball is devastating just a scud missile that's got giants hitters baffled and i mean really all hitters in baseball baffled it seems like struggles with control at times but tonight he was dealing he threw a lot of pitches uh but se again seven strikeouts the giants had a hard time getting to him while he was on the hill kyle harrison showed decent tonight you know he, he had the stuff working but he threw a lot of pitches for not a lot of strikes uh, he, he only had 57 strikes tonight on 87 pitches. That's not good enough of a, of a ball to strike ratio. Uh, you want to see that improve. You want to see him fill up the zone a little more, excuse me, only 54 of them were strikes in 87 pitches. You want to see him fill up that zone a little more, but, uh, the stuff is there. Uh, he had some strikeouts tonight, uh, but, but six walks is, is, is three walks is, is just too many. It's, 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 it's not. You can't keep loading bases with, with free 90s, and it hurt him early. Uh, he uh, he he walked some guys, and 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 they scored. Runners scored. It was it was not a it was not an ideal start for Harrison in this one. Uh, the Miguel Rojas sh solo shot to left uh, ended up being the difference too. And how frustrating is that? That this Dodgers lineup, you get all the way down to Miguel Rojas in the nine hole, and he pops. A home run and you get to go right back up and face Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman and start all over again. It is just relentless. That is the that's the the word that comes to mind when I think of this Dodgers lineup. Just absolutely relentless. Again, a murderer's row and Shohei Otani blasted his first home run as a Dodger. And man, I'm so bummed that this came off of the Giants and and Taylor Rogers. Let's 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 say what it was. He tossed a meatball up there, a freaking meatball, man, like 92, 93 belt high out over the plate, like like middle outside of the strike zone. You can't do that to Shohei Otani. You, you just can't do that. And there's so many hitters in this Dodgers lineup that you just can't do that to that someone's going to run into one, but the, the, the one guy that you just really, really, really can't do that with is Shohei Otani. And he made him pay for it. Just obliterated that ball. It, it might still be flying out there somewhere, but hundred and 105.6 mile per hour exit velo, 430 feet, five to three Dodgers after that bomb. And, uh, you kind of felt like that was, that was it. You know, the Dodgers were going to run away with this one. Until Jorge Soler 
launched one. I mean, launched one five, 452 feet. It looked like it was going to be over 500 feet. The way he just crushed this ball, 112 miles per hour exit velocity, 112 miles per hour exit velocity. I'll say that again, uh, shrunk it to five to four in, in the Michael Comfort almost tied it up there almost in the in the top of the eighth he he came up right after Solaire had just barely missed getting all of this pitch and ended up flying out to right field but he i mean off the bat it the swing looked good the the ugh, man it just it he just barely missed getting all of that one man if he had put that into the right field seats we would have had a whole new ball game as that would have tied it at five instead uh we go into the top of the ninth five to four same score and Denelson Lamette comes in to close it out, which was interesting because he is not the Dodgers typical closer, uh, but he is a very effective arm. He's got a lot of good pitches. Uh, his control can be a little wild. You saw him almost a uh, uh, drill Matt Chapman right in the jaw there at the end of this one. Uh, but you know, he, he's uh, he was, he was a very highly touted player in the Padres organization at one point for a reason. And he showed you why tonight slamming the door shut on the giants as the Dodgers Pick up yet another win in this early season. Dodgers now seven and two, Giants two and five so far on the early season. As the Giants now finish up this road road trip, leaving something to be desired. They showed some good signs, but you really didn't want to see them coming back home uh, two and five to start the season. I think this team is a lot better than two and five. But this Dodgers team, man, I I think the story more tonight and after this series is. I, this this is going to be so frustrating all season long to watch these stupid Smurfs down in Los Angeles probably get, what, 110 wins this year? I mean, am I going out on a limb by saying that I, I think this Dodgers team could actually win like 120 games, set the set the set the record for most wins in a single season? I, I think they could, man. Like they're they are that good. This pitching staff is so solid. And I mean it's only going to get better as you guys got guys returning from injury uh, later on in the season. You have multiple Cy Young candidates on this staff. Uh, Tyler Glass now, one of them. He showed you why tonight. And multiple MVP candidates on on this uh, on this team as well offensively. I mean, just all three of their top three hitters are all MVP candidates. <laughs> Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Shohei Otani. Any three of those guys could win the MVP this year, and I wouldn't be very surprised. And that's... <laughs> They're all on the same team, man, and it's the stupid Dodgers. I want to say a lot of bad words on this podcast about them that I'm not allowed to say, so I'm not going to do that, but I just, you know, blank the Dodgers. We'll leave it at that. I just just blank the Dodgers, and, and, and I, you know, nothing, nothing hurts my heart more than a series sweep in Los Angeles. I mean, the Giants don't really play very well down at Dodger Stadium. That's That's been very well documented and reported and noted by you know many people over and over again but it it's never any easier man every time they go down there and they just get worked it is so frustrating there's so many things about it that just make it so much more frustrating like tonight after that Shohei Otani bomb you just hear all this music and like Kruk and Kipe can't even talk because it is so loud in the press box why is your sound system that loud this isn't a concert it's i mean i get it like it, you know, giants got just actually got a a new sound system installed too at oracle in the off season so that's going to be uh debuted here on uh friday with the uh home opener right around the corner but i, I don't really need it to be that that loud you know like i'm trying to listen to the broadcast i want to hear the sweet sounds of Crook and Kipe, and I can't get that when I'm when I'm hearing like techno being blasted over the over the loudspeakers at a uh, at Dodger Stadium. That's just drowning out uh, the sounds of the broadcast. It's just not it's not ideal, man. It's not ideal. It, frustrating, frustrating loss. Uh, one more note on tonight's game. Uh, first game of the year that Jung Hu Lee has not gotten on base, and that's not going to happen very often this year. He's going to be on base all the time, which is great. Uh, he couldn't get on base in, in this one. He couldn't draw any walks, uh, didn't get any hits. Rare that that happens. Uh, he did make some pretty solid contact. You saw Muncie make a, a nice snag at third there, a little happy birthday gift uh, when just waving at the ball when when Young Hu smashed uh 
Jung who smashed that ball down the third baseline uh, the opposite way and and it you know uh, you heard uh, you heard Kipe say on the on the broadcast you know Barry Bonds used to say all the time all you can do is hit the ball hard hope hope it finds a hole and uh, that's what he did unfortunately didn't find a hole so it's uh it's been a it's been a tough start to the Giants season uh, this was a uh, interesting note Kyle Harrison's uh, second start in Dodger Stadium. His first two starts went pretty well against the Dodgers. His third start lifetime uh, came tonight. And his first prior two starts, one seven four ERA, 10 and a third innings pitched, two runs, one home run, three walks, and six Ks. Not as sharp in this one tonight uh, for, um, for Kyle Harrison, who, by the way, I mistakenly said uh, in his last outing that he was not still Qualified as a rookie, he is still qualified as a rookie. That is my bad. Hand up, my bad. But Kyle Harrison, rookie of the year, maybe. I, I mean, I, I don't see why not. He he could absolutely be in conversation for that for that award at the end of the year. We'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I I like his chances. He's he's going to get a lot of opportunity, a lot of starts for the Giants. They're going to need him uh, to to pitch up to that kind of caliber if they're going to be successful this season and make a playoff run as we're hoping that they can uh, as we're really hoping that they can the giants didn't didn't pick up a ton of hits in this one five hits uh you know i i, I did keep tabs on the game last night i know we didn't go live afterwards uh, we had a warriors game very important warriors game to do if you're not already watching our shows on locked on sports bay area and the locked on warriors postcast then then make sure you tune in for that as well uh we'll, we'll be coming to you live after both giants and warriors games when we have the opportunity to but you know, right now, early season baseball, postseason Warriors, one of these we got to make a, a judgment call on. And so we went with the postseason Warriors game. Make sure you're checking out those broadcasts. But point being, I did tune in to Giants Dodgers last night. I had a little split screen action going on, and and it was nice to see Soler run, run into one. And he again, another massive bomb from him tonight. He is finding his stroke at the dish. That is a positive you can hang your hat on coming out of this road trip. Conforto. Excellent, excellent, excellent showing at the dish again tonight. Yes, he was only one for four, but that one hit was a big one. Big, 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 big one. And he just missed sending one out of the yard to tie this up. Uh, that that one hit was a single that drove in two runs, and it kept the Giants in this one. It made you feel like they had a shot. And I think that's a, that's a good takeaway from these last two games. That first one against the Dodgers just felt like you had absolutely no shot against this team. But these last two games, the Giants have been right there, right there. Things go slightly different, just barely different. Conforto, just a millimeter difference in his bat placement, and that ball is out of the park. And that's that's the difference in this one is literally a millimeter. So the Giants are right there, right there to compete with a team like the Dodgers. And I think that's a very, very good sign for this team. A nice, nice little, you know, you don't want to call it a moral victory, but but at this point in the season, I think it's okay to have moral victories to get get the confidence boosted on this roster going forward. You're gonna need it. Uh, you got the Padres coming next uh, as the Giants return home for their home opener uh, of the 2024 season. Uh, Camilo Duvall bobblehead night. That'll be fun uh, on Friday. Uh, it all gets going. Uh, it's actually bobblehead day, not night. As is a Home opener day game, 135 start out at Oracle. Make sure you get there early, get your bobblehead, get some of the new snacks. I was checking out some of the new snacks that are going to be available at Oracle Park. You know, we love snacks here on Locked On Sports and uh, Bay Area and on the Locked On Giants postcast. And uh, we got to take a quick break. But on the other side, we need to talk more about this game and the different permutations of this one, as well as. I got something big, 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 big to tell you guys about. Some big news coming up next week on the Locked On Giants postcast that just came down the pipe earlier today. Got to update you guys on that. Some special guests dropping by the show. Uh, more on the other side. Stick with us on the Locked On Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. We will be right back. Locked on Giants postcast is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Just we are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of bet, instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you make more or less than on two to six different player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. 
Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for the playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn... You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. And download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the, the Prize Picks app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. It's Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Welcome back to the Locked On Giants postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Engel, and the Dodgers tonight take down the Giants five to four, close out the sweep in Los Angeles. Shohei Otani hits a monster home run. Not what you want to see from your boys by the bay as they finish out this road trip on a four game losing streak. But good news, good news, returning home. Well, I shouldn't say returning home, but coming home for the first time in the 2024 season, right around the corner. The Giants get their first off day tomorrow of the season. A nice day to recoup, reset. You know they'll need it after, after this tough three-game set in Los Angeles. It's never fun to go down there and lose in that just hellhole of a stadium. I... I I don't really like Dodger Stadium. I, I it's it's not my favorite place. I know a lot of people that would agree with me, uh, including Dwayne Kuyper, who you know was ready to leave Dodger Stadium as he said a couple times on the broadcast. And uh, it, the Giants showed some 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 fight, which I I really enjoyed that they didn't just lay down and die in these last couple games. You got the relentless murderers row of this Dodgers lineup across from you and in you're still scrapping you're out there fighting scrapping clawing and that's that's how the Giants have won that's that's how they have gotten things done in the past you think back to the glory days of all the things on the wall behind me if you're watching on the on the stream of of, of Matt Cain how did Matt Cain end up holding that trophy that World Series trophy through grit and grind and never die and and, and the Giants seem to always figure out a way to win through pitching and defense and just gutting wins out at the plate somehow. So a different guy every night getting something done. It's it's you're going to need that against a team like the Dodgers who have a just all-star cast top to bottom. I mean, the first four batters in this lineup, their contracts combined for over a billion dollars with a B billion with a B that is insane absolute insanity that's not even throwing in the fact that they got you know teoscar hernandez and and max muncie behind behind those guys as well and and, and all those uh big uh, contracts that they have out to to pitchers we didn't even talk about that's not even accounting for those so it's very frustrating when uh when your rival has got to be this team and the giants are going to need to win games the way that they have in the past on pitching and defense that's how you counter a lineup like this is you get better defensively, which they have done. And, and one, one highlight, it wasn't really, I don't know if you can call it a highlight from tonight, but one, one sign of that was Jung Hu Lee making center field just look so smooth and easy. I mean, he gets a great jump on every time, covers a ton of ground. There was a deep fly ball hit out to the warning track in this one where he just made it look like he just jogged over there and caught it. But if you kind of zoom out and look at how much ground he covered, he made that look so simple. And that was a ball that, you know, Austin Slater would make look a little tough. Uh, uh, he'd, he'd catch that. He'd catch that ball in a full sprint. <laughs> you'd still probably get there, but he'd be in a full sprint. Maybe not take the best route. Jung Hu Lee takes the most direct route to the baseball. And is just so, so silky smooth while he does it silky smooth while he does it. And that glove looks so sure. And he just looks excellent in center field and how, much of a relief is it to just know that you have a staple outfielder that you can show up and expect to be out there every single day. I am so happy that they signed this guy in the offseason. I think this is the best signing that the Giants have made in a very long time, free agent wise. This is 
the, a home run of a signing to, to it's a grand slam of a signing. I mean, it is whatever, whatever hyperbole you want to use, use it, go ahead for this. In this instance, he changes this entire lineup and defense. He, he makes your whole team better in every phase of the game. He had speed. He, I, I love this signing. The more and more I see this guy out there, the more I love him as a giant. He is quickly becoming one of my favorite players on this team. I mean, I might have to go out and get a 51, you know what I mean? That I, I, I might, I might have to, he's, he's forcing my hand. If I mean, Michael Conforto kind of, kind of making a case too, but you know, you, you gotta love the story. He comes over here from, from the KBO, his, his dad is KBO royalty. And, and he's, you know, highly touted as one of the best players in that league comes over here and, and revolutionizes what the giants are doing in the outfield. Essentially. I mean, you look at what they did last year compared to this year, and he is, he is the piece that set everything else in motion, all this other change. And it, it shows, it signals how important things are like, you know, defense and in, in getting on base to this team this year and the philosophy change that the giants have undergone in the off season, of course, going back to back to back to basics, I'd say with baseball, you know, back to the, the older school ways of winning with uh, getting a guy like Bob Melvin in here to, to, to get some consistency, you know, like we didn't have very much consistency day to day, all these platoons. And yes, the giants are still going to need to platoon a little bit, to 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 get through the season but you you love that he's going to ride these staples in the lineup and and do things like have starting pitchers instead of openers and and, and that's what is going to make baseball in San Francisco better again getting back to these things that won the Giants World Series in the past and, and you know we got to talk a little bit more about the bullpen as well uh, I I really did like some stuff I saw from Eric Miller tonight. Again, some 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 positives coming out of tonight, other than that uh, that Taylor Rogers meatball to uh, to Shohei. Uh, more to get into on the other side. Stick with us on the Locked On Giants postcast. Uh, we got to get into Eric Miller's night a little bit and uh, look at what he's been doing so far for the Giants this season out of the pen. And this discussion of young arms and how they're doing is going to continue. So. Uh, stick with us on the Locked On Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E. Ingle, we will be right back. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I love the last minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, whatever you're into. Zone deals are pretty sweet too. If you know you want to see, see the Giants, for instance, maybe, you know, Friday, opening day. I mean, I, I know I want to go out there. We'll, we'll see if I can make that happen. Uh, you, so if I go out there, I know I got my certain spots in the yard I like to sit sit in, like maybe club section on the right field wall. Maybe you want to get rowdy in the left field bleachers. You just choose a section and let game time choose the seats and save even more money. And of course, you got to love the all-in pricing. Make sure to toggle this feature on to show all of the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. I hate surprise fees almost as much as I hate Dodger sweeps. So this sounds pretty great to me. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. For a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th. Download the game time app today. Lat Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Giants postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. And Giants go down five to four to the Los Angeles Dodgers in this one. It, it just, it's a bummer, man. You never want to see a road sweep, especially in Los Angeles. It is just the worst place to get swept in all of baseball, if you ask me. And, and the Giants were close, though. They battled this one out. It's 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 a tough, tough task to start the season on the road, especially when you got a lot of young arms in your staff. And, and tonight, 
young arms all over the place. Kyle Harrison, a very young arm uh, for the Giants. And another young arm, uh, Eric Miller. Eric with a K. Shout out Eric's with a K. Eric Miller uh, comes in in this one, first arm out of the pen. And he's had a shaky start to the season so far. In uh, in his prior appearances, he had an ERA above 16. Uh, three appearances prior to this one, five earned runs. Only two hits, though. The problem has been that he's been lacking control. It hasn't been the stuff. It's been the control, which that's the story with so many pitchers to start baseball seasons every single year. How many times did Tim Lincecum look like he was not that great to start the year? And then by the time May ends, you're like, you're like okay, yeah, Timmy's back to being Timmy, being the freak. It, it's that same way for so many guys in baseball. And, and Miller looks to be no exception. He had four walks in his three prior outings, and it surrendered five runs in large part because of those walks. So tonight, very, very, very good to see that, you know, he, he didn't issue any walks, two strikeouts, and his stuff looked nasty, downright nasty out there on the hill. Building confidence is huge for guys like him right now. And, and we've talked about Roop and in some of the other young arms too, that the giants are going to lean on out of the pen. Some of these guys need to get it, you know, some so show something, some form of consistency for the giants going forward so that they know how they, they, they know what they can expect. And I, I think that you got to give, I've said this before, you got to give them until Memorial day. I, I think that's the, that's the cutoff in my brain. If you, if you haven't really shown that you got what it takes to, to stick at the big leagues by then, then maybe you need some more time down in the minors. So good to see that Miller is trending in the right direction. Again, tonight, two strikeouts. It, it was good to see that. It was really good to see that. Uh, one other note from Young Arms today, Kyle Harrison. Uh, we we talked so much about that Shohei Otani home run. Let's talk about that first Otani at bat instead, where Kyle Harrison K'd him. I mean, the, the first matchup between Kyle Harrison and Shohei Otani, first of very, very many you can anticipate between the two, and Kyle Harrison gets him. And that was that was fun to see the uh, strikeout of Otani in their very first matchup. Would have been pretty cool if Otani didn't go yard at the end in this one as well. Uh, it, and those home runs proved to be proved to be the difference that that Shohei Otani home run and the Miguel Rojas home run. That Rojas home run though is just just a kick in the gut, man. I mean the 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 Giants seem like they're right there, like they can still kind of make a run for it, and then that. You just get the Dodgers ninth hitter who's like maybe the one guy in the lineup that you go, okay, maybe we got this one. You're not sweating this at bat out. And he pops one over the left field fence. And you got to restart back at the top of the order with Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman and Shohei Otani and Will Smith and all these guys who are just all stars. And, and you can't <laughs> like I there's no escaping the the murderer's road, the gauntlet that is the Dodgers lineup. There's no easy outs in in their pitching staff makes life really hard on you at the plate i mean tyler glass now had seven strikeouts only two walks tonight give up three runs great showing by glass now there's a reason that he was as highly touted in free agency as he was and the dodgers just you know the rich get richer and there's not a lot you can do when you compete against teams like this other than try to limit damage, focus on control the controllables. They say that all the time in sports. Control the controllables. And the controllables for the Giants are you can control your defense. You can you can field balls that are hit to you cleanly, get outs, and you can control your pitching. You can't really control what the other team is doing at the dish, but you can control giving them good pitches to hit, not throwing meatballs up there like, you know, Rogers did in this one to Otani. You don't want to serve Otani a fresh plate of meatballs. He's going to make you pay every single time. So this one doesn't go the Giants way. You look to turn it around as you come home for the first homestand of the season starts Friday against the San Diego Padres. Again, the Giants are off tomorrow. And, and if you guys are looking for something to do on the off day, tune in to uh, Locked On Warriors postcast as we'll be coming to you live from a huge game against the Houston Rockets. The Warriors have tomorrow night. Massive playoff implications in this one. And one more thing before we get out of here. I promised you guys, if you stuck with us till the end, here is your little treat, your golden nugget. I have some big news. As I say on the top of every single one of these shows, you may know me as the former producer for the Murph and Mac show on KMBR. Well, guess who is coming on the show next week? Polly freaking McCaffrey is going to stop by the Locked On Giants postcast. I am so 
so excited. If you're watching on the postcast or on the on the YouTube stream, you can probably see me just grinning ear to ear because I love Polly Mac. And I know a lot of you guys do too. I know a lot of you guys haven't heard from him since he left KMBR. So he'll be stopping by the show, breaking down some Giants next week on Wednesday. So tune in then, Locked on Giants postcast with me, Triple E, and Polly McCaffrey. Oh man, I'm so excited. So make sure you tune in for that. That's about all the time that we have for today. Uh, it's This has been the Locked On Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. Make sure to tune in to the Locked On Warriors postcast tomorrow after the Warriors and the Rockets face off. And our next Locked On Giants postcast will come to you live on Friday after, uh, after Giants Padres 135 start on Friday at that home opener. Thanks so much for joining us in this one, and we will see you next time. Peace.